Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the CH Wine Tasting Room. I'm Chris Lafleur, your sommelier at large, and today we are tasting some Cabernet Sauvignon from, oh, not where you think, from Lodi. This is Lot 850. So if you think about Lodi, typically we're thinking about Zinfandel. I mean, if we're thinking really hard, we're thinking about the old vine stuff, which is truly delightful. But really, Lodi is warm enough that you usually get some pretty ripe expressions of wine. You can colloquially say it's a jam bomb, but uh, you know, you don't have to. You can just say it's real, real ripe. Some Sometimes jammy, but that's fine. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is a wine that is built by its structure with lots of acidity and tannins. So I think even a jam bomb Cabernet Sauvignon shall be delightfully complex and we'll taste it together to prove this. Now with Cabernet Sauvignon, you always need to have good drainage in the soil. For instance, if you're in Bordeaux in Saint-Emilion, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon does not tolerate clay, so it will not live over there. But if you have something like clay loam, something that's not quite as water retentive, which you would find in Lodi, then this might be a good place to put some Cabernet Sauvignon. I mean, really, in California, is there a place that's not good to put Cabernet Sauvignon? I don't think so. Uh, great, okay, ooh, hey, look at that. Okay, so first off, we already have some really nice color. Uh, it's leaning into a very ruby core with a little bit of a, a lighter presence on the side. It's still fairly pink, so it's showing that it's young, but I think in time it's gonna develop slightly more garnet hues. Uh, let's go ahead and smell. Okay, okay. All right, so something delightful is happening here, which is that this wine is showing uh, not just a jammy expression of this grape, but also is showing uh, some nice tertiary aromatics. Let's talk through them. Uh, we have immediately some blackberry, but also some black currant. Uh, it's very strong, it's quite pungent, uh, but in a way that is, uh, you know, it's showing exactly how expressive this fruit can be. So very nice. There's also a little bit of green notes here, like kind of a red pepper, green pepper, but really more red pepper, like slightly more ripe and expressed. Oh, and there's a, a great, uh, there's a little bit of wood. Uh, it's showing like vanilla and toast, uh, but it's not overpowering this wine. I can detect that it's there, but it's certainly not driving the bus, which means that the fruit is taking the first place as it should. Uh, let's go ahead and taste it and see how the palate shows. Oh, that's good. That is good, that is languorous. It was hard to spit that, it was so tasty. The black currant character shows even more thoroughly on the palate and it feels very coating. Uh, all across the palate, I'm getting some coarse tannins to show that this is a bit young, but I think will develop nicely. And the black currant uh, is almost overpowering any other fruit, but there is still some blackberry and a little bit of black cherry. Uh, not quite plum, we're not so plush on this one. This is very structured. And there's also some great acidity. My mouth is water watering and I'm struggling not to spit at the camera as I speak to you. Uh, how delightful and delicious. Uh, the barrel program is very well integrated here. It's a nice finish of toast on the back palate. So as you carry through with all the fruit, you still get a hint of that barrel coming through. Uh, it is delightful. However, I would say this is a little bit young. This is 2020, and this is a wine that over time will show itself better. And typically Cabernet Sauvignon needs a little bit of time to settle down. Those tannins need to polymerize. They need to relax a little bit and not be so coarse and become a little bit more sandy and fine. So uh, if you're interested in this wine, which I, I think you should be, because it is very, very tasty, then this is one that you're gonna wanna lie down for a little bit. I would say six months minimum, um, maybe even a year on this one. We are fall 2023 here, so there's lots of time to get past spooky season, get past Christmas, and start celebrating the beginning of spring with some delightful Cabernet Sauvignon. So where does this fit in your cellar? Well, I think this needs to lie down, so put it some, with some other wines that might wanna lie down, but maybe don't let it go too long. I think a year is gonna benefit this wine, but anything past that might be a bit too much. You really wanna showcase how fresh this wine is, and that means give it six months to a year minimum. Uh, I think you can also put this now, if you really like drinking wines a little bit young, with a nice steak. Uh, I would suggest you probably wanna go strip loin, not quite tenderloin. Strip loin's gonna have that fat cap that's gonna round out those tannins. Uh, ribeye might be a little bit overwrought for this one, but you know you still have a little bit of wiggle room to play with there. Get the tri-tip, get the skirt steak, something like that. Uh, either way, there's a wine here with lots of potential. I encourage you to taste multiple bottles of this so that you can really understand how it develops. And I will see you between those bottles at the next glass.